Chapter 2181 Donald turned to look at him. Isn't there someone shadowing Fabio? Chunky lowered his head. I don't know if Fabio has found out about our plan. All the people that we've sent to keep an eye on him have all gone off the radar. Donald closed his eyes, and his facial expression stiffened. He's fallen so far and gotten so dumb that he plans to work with the Southern clan. He then opened his eyes and looked at Chunky. Since Fabio has chosen not to comply, then there's no need for us to keep him alive. Getting rid of him is the only way for me to completely take over his faction. Chunky responded, then I'll get someone to make it happen now. Cameron came to the commune at noon, and the people in the commune were stunned when they saw her in women's clothes. After all, it was their first time seeing Cameron in women's clothes. Mr. Miss Southern Everyone still had not gotten accustomed to this sudden change in her appellation. Cameron cleared her throat. You can call me whatever title that you're used to calling. There's nothing to worry about. Everyone scratched their heads and chuckled awkwardly. Daisy came out of the inside. Cameron? She trotted to Cameron, grabbed her hand, and seemed to be very happy to see her. Why are you here? Of course, I've come to find you. Let's go inside first. Cameron brought Daisy back into the building. Back in the building, Daisy personally ground some beans, brewed her a cup of coffee, walked to the couch with the coffee, and sat down. I worry that you don't like it to be too bitter, so I added some sugar for you. I can do either, it doesn't matter to me. Cameron picked up the cup and took a sip from it. Your coffee brewing skills are pretty good. Daisy supported her chin with her palms and stared at her with a faint smile. Waylon makes great coffee too. Besides cooking, he's also good at making snacks and desserts. You name it. Cameron was startled and squinted slightly. Why are you telling me this? Daisy chuckled as an indescribable emotion rippled in her eyes. You and Waylon are both friends. I only want you to know more about him. Friends, Cameron lowered her gaze. Why does it feel so strange coming from Daisy? She then remembered something and put down the cup. Wayne's clothes are all custom made by the same brand, aren't they? Daisy nodded. Great, can you help me contact the tailor and order a shirt for him? I'll pay for it. Daisy was stunned for a moment, and her eyes lit up. Cameron, do you want to give Waylon a new shirt as a gift? Oh my god, did I hear it right? Cameron's expression looked earnest. I tore one of his shirts, so it's only normal for me to compensate him with a new one. Is there something wrong? Daisy's grin became slightly more reserved, and she looked slightly disappointed. Oh, is that? So. Cameron frowned. Are you rejecting me? Daisy waved her hand hurriedly. No, I'll definitely help you out. Don't worry, I'll help you contact the tailor. I'm a pro when it comes to such tasks. Cameron nodded. Cool, tell me how much it costs after it's done. I'll transfer the payment to you. I won't take advantage of you. A black car was driving down Seaside Street and was about to go to the Southwest District. A bullet shot through the glass from the right side and hit the driver in front of Fabio in the blink of an eye. The car lost control, slid violently, and hit the guardrail. A van was parked not far away on the roadside, and a few men wearing masks and body armor got out and approached the thrashed car. Fabio took a gun out from under the front seat's cushion and climbed out of the car. He hid behind the car and shot ruthlessly at the approaching people. One of the bullets hit someone's leg, and the men in black started shooting at the rear of the car. Fabio ran out of bullets, pulled the safety catch of another gun, and when he tried to fire again, it was an empty shot. The two shots that followed were blank as well. Chapter 2182 Fabio grunted. Fuck. The men in black surrounded the car with guns. Fabio Puzo, your time is up. Seeing that Fabio did not respond, one of them carefully went around the car and came to the rear of the car, where Fabio rushed out from behind abruptly. The man was caught off guard and reacted almost instantly, and a thunderous gunshot pierced through the sky, but the bullet missed. 
The man in black had his gun snatched, lost his balance as Fabio kicked him violently, and fell to the ground. When the other men saw this, they immediately fired at Fabio. Fabio retreated to the rear of the car to avoid the bullets. The shattered glass cut his arm, and blood spurted through torn flesh. And that was when a man in black suddenly rolled over the car's roof and knocked Fabio down. Just as he was about to shoot Fabio, someone shouted, Shit! Someone's here! The man lost focus for a split second and was kicked over by Fabio. The latter picked up the gun and shot him in the head, and blood splattered on the road behind him. A vehicle was approaching. It was a bulletproof car, and it was obviously coming at them. Thus, they did not continue with what they were doing and had to flee back to the van and escape the scene. The man who got out of the bulletproof car approached Fabio. Fabio glanced at the man's face, which looked slightly oriental, and thought that he was someone Sonny had sent. However, he was knocked out with a stun gun before he could react, and the gun that was inches away from his hand was kicked away. He lay on the ground, his limbs felt numb, and he could not move until a familiar figure approached him. He raised his head and growled viciously, Gale, you betrayed me, and you still have the guts to show up. Sadai stopped in front of him. I've never been loyal to you, so how could I betray you? Fabio laughed ferociously. If I were to know that this day would come, I should have killed you back then. Unfortunately, your biggest enemy has never been us, but Donald instead, Sadai said calmly. Donald placed spies in the Southern Clan's territory and secretly colluded with Manuel, who was originally one of the chess pieces of his grand scheme. Manuel had planned a lot of things for him from the shadows, before his death. If the Southern hadn't discovered their relationship first, you'd still only be his most important pawn at this very moment. Fabio's cheek trembled, and his eyes turned bloodshot. Then tell me, are you working with the Southern? And was Buchanan playing me? He was referring to the incident where Sadie had secretly helped Sonny. Sadie's gaze shifted away from him. Mr. Gibson didn't play you. That woman was indeed me. He seemed to recall what Donald had said to him before this, and he was astonished. Sadness, depression, wrath, and ridicule were among all the emotions that surged from the bottom of his heart in an instant, and all of them came from that man. Buchanan had been nurturing the idea of betraying Fabio, but he had never turned his thoughts into actions. Everything that he had thought about was for self-protection, fearing that he would become next on the hit list. He was afraid of dying, loved money, and was cowardly and tactful. Even if he had been nurturing the idea of turning against Fabio, he did not really want to betray him unless he was forced to. Unfortunately, Fabio had been blinded by his self-willed judgment, believed in the wrong person, and killed Buchanan without any hesitation. That was the incident that opened up the opportunity for Donald to take over all of Buchanan's connections and turned Fabio's cruelty towards someone who had been loyal to him for a decade into a reason for him to rise up against him. For most of his life, he had always regarded himself as someone wealthy, influential, and powerful and assumed that no one would have the guts to oppose him. However, thinking back at this moment made him feel ridiculous about himself. Of course, you don't have to feel discouraged. If you're willing to cooperate with us and Lord Donald, we won't even think twice about giving you a chance to atone for your sins too. Fabio sounded calm. Why should I work with you? You don't have a choice either. Donald now knows that you're working with Mr. Southern Sr. and wants to end you. Will you be reconciled if he takes over your place in the East Islands while you die and rot on the streets? Chapter 2183 Fabio fell into a trance and did not utter a single word for a long time. At 7 p.m., Cameron came back from outside. Sonny sat in the living room drinking tea, raised his gaze, and looked at the person who stepped into the house. Where did you go all day long? She stopped in front of the stairs and replied, I went to the commune. Sonny squinted and glanced at her. Then why did you go into Willie's room this morning? How do you know that? Wayne doesn't seem to be a loquacious person. One of the servants has most probably seen me. Sonny chuckled. You, a full-grown lady, actually went into a man's room. Tell me the truth, are you plotting against him? Don't you slander me, 
I didn't do so. Then what did you do in the room? I was measuring his size. Sonny lost his firm grip on the teacup for a split second, and the lid fell onto the table. After a while, he asked in astonishment. What, exactly what did you measure in there? Cameron knew her father had gotten the wrong idea, and her cheeks heated up instantly. Still, she remained as calm as a millpond and explained solemnly, What are you thinking? I was just measuring his chest, waist, and hip measurements. Sonny was suspicious. If you want to measure such measurements, why do you have to go into his room in person and close the door? Did you measure them with your arms? I. I can't even be bothered to explain everything to you in detail. She waved her hand and went upstairs immediately, not wanting Sonny to continue asking her questions. Sonny looked at her back as she went upstairs, rubbed his chin, and sank deep in thought. She went into his room just to take his measurements. How do you expect me to believe that nothing smells fishy? At that moment, Mahina walked in from the courtyard. Mr. Southern Sr., Donald has run out of patience and made a move on Mr. Puzo today. After listening to Mahina's report, Sonny's expression became slightly restrained as he narrowed his eyes. Donald is truly a hasty one, huh? Mahina continued. His assassination attempt has failed, and he knows that Fabio will definitely get back at him. Also, during this assault, whether Fabio wanted to or not, he was forced into retaliating. Fabio originally wanted to get the Southern clan to take action first while he waited for his opportunity to emerge, but why would the Southern clan do so? As for now, they could use Donald's assassination attempt to coerce Fabio into making the first move, even if he did not want to do so. Sonny cleaned the spilled tea on the table and the lid that had broken in half and said with a smile, the key to success is in their hands this time around. Meanwhile, upstairs, Cameron paced up and down in her bedroom. It's obvious that Dad must have misunderstood my relationship with Wayne. He wouldn't believe in me even if I were to explain things further. However, if I were to get Wayne to clear things out with Dad, he would definitely believe in what Wayne says since he trusts him so much. Thinking of this, she decided to talk to Waylon. Cameron went out and walked toward Wayne's room. She was about to knock on the door, but the door was not locked. Cameron pushed the door open. The light in the room was on, but she did not see anyone in it. She walked into the bedroom and suddenly heard the sound of running water coming from the bathroom. The frosted glass in the bathroom was not completely transparent, and the shower curtain in the interior covered half of the shower, so she could barely see the swaying silhouette. It was nowhere near a clear view. Cameron turned away subconsciously. Is he taking a shower? The sound of flowing water in the bathroom stopped all of a sudden, and the silhouette behind the frosted glass gradually became clearer. She was about to flee the room when Waylon wrapped a towel around his waist, walked out of the bathroom, and ran into her at the perfect time. Cameron froze in place awkwardly. He had just finished taking a shower, so the water vapor escaped the shower and blurred the glass and mirror, and he seemed to be shrouded in it too. The fragrance of soap and shampoo on his body dispersed all over the room's interior, and there was also a faint fragrance that came from Phrygia flowers. Waylon was obviously astounded and narrowed his eyes. You, Cameron glanced at his figure, shifted her gaze away, and raised her hands to cover her eyes. I was looking for you about something, but I didn't expect you to be taking a shower. Chapter 2184 Waylon grabbed his bathrobe off the shelf, put it on slowly, and smiled. Mr. Southern, this is the second time that you've broken into my room. Cameron lied with an earnest expression, I knocked on the door, but you didn't respond. He fastened his belt. I might not have responded, but you just broke in? Cameron thought of something, lifted her head, and met his gaze. This seems to be my home. Even if I've broken into your room, you don't have the right to say anything about it. Besides, even if I were to see you but naked, you wouldn't even suffer any losses. Waylon froze in place for a short moment, lifted his gaze, and chuckled abruptly. You actually wish to see me but naked? No, I don't. You touched me all over earlier this morning, and you now wish to see me but naked. No matter how I look at it, it seems that I've suffered a huge deal of losses. 
Stop the nonsense. Willie. Sonny's voice came from outside the door, and Cameron was so frightened that she froze. Waylon turned around and was about to go out when Cameron grasped his arm and lowered her voice. Don't you ever let my father in, and don't you dare tell him that I'm here. He looked down at her nervous expression and smirked. That depends on my mood. You. Waylon broke his arm free, walked to the door, and opened it. Cameron hid behind the wall and covered her cheeks. This is it for me. Nothing I say will ever save me from this situation. Sonny stood outside the door and took a glance into the room. Why did I hear Cam's voice just now? She isn't in your room, is she? Waylon smiled. You must have been mistaken. Is that so? Sonny was dubious. He had heard Cameron's voice, but since Waylon did not want to come clean with him, there was no need for him to expose it. By the way, you should know about Fabio's incident. Waylon nodded. Aunt Sedai has informed me that Fabio has decided to lure the predator out of its hiding spot in a week. I also had people contact Interpol, and they'll also arrive in the East Islands in a week. Good to hear that. Sonny then took another glance into the bedroom and gave off a smirk. Then you should get some rest. I'll leave you alone for the night. After saying that, he left with his hands resting behind his back and right below his waistline. Cameron quietly stuck her head out from inside the room, and after confirming that Sonny had already left, she heaved a sigh of relief and walked out of the bedroom. You're indeed a grateful man. I shall go back to my room now. She was about to leave when Waylon's arm suddenly lay across the door. Are you sure your father is gone? Cameron was startled. What do you mean by that? Waylon let off a faint smile. I'm confident he might be hiding in the corner, staring at my room from the shadows. If you go out now, all you've done so far to hide from him will be in vain. Cameron was at a loss for words for a moment. To be honest, I won't doubt for a second that Dad is such a person. Cameron sat on the couch with Waylon and waited for twenty minutes straight. She propped her hand against the armrest and rested her head in her palm, feeling a little drowsy. He wouldn't be so bored that he's been keeping his eyes on your room for almost half an hour, would he? Waylon flipped through a magazine and suggested casually, you can always go out now and check things out. She turned her head and stared at Waylon. I'll wait for another ten minutes then. I'll close my eyes and rest for a bit. Wake me up when the ten minutes are up. Waylon froze for a split second and turned to look at her. Camaro leaned on her side with a bolster, lay on the couch with her head resting on the armrest, and really closed her eyes. It seemed like she did not regard Waylon, who was sitting right next to her, as a man, or she had subconsciously regarded herself as a man. In short, she was completely defenseless. Ten minutes later, Waylon placed the magazine down, lifted his hand, and pushed her. Cameron. She frowned and muttered, shush. Waylon covered his forehead and gave off a helpless smile. You said it yourself that it's going to only be a ten-minute nap. Cameron did not even budge as if she was sleeping very soundly. Waylon turned off the lights in the room and took a good look at her. Under the faint moonlight, her well-defined facial features gave her a hint of elegance and glamour. She looked charming when she was a man and pretty when she was a woman. Both these features stood out clearly. Chapter 2185 Cameron was rather smart but could also sometimes be very confused. However, when faced with life and death situations, she was always a calm and rational person, but she seemed to lose her cool very easily and often when she was in front of him. Waylon stretched out his hand, tucked the locks and strands of hair that were covering her face behind her oracle with his fingertips, and squinted slightly. Good for you, getting to sleep, so soundly. A ray of sunlight beamed into the room, through the window, penetrated through the gap in the curtains, and reflected onto the couch. Cameron slowly opened her eyes, recalled something, and sat up abruptly. She removed the blanket covering her, looked around, and suddenly remembered the purpose of her visit to Wayland's room last night. It was obvious that she had not only fallen asleep in his room, but also forgotten what she wanted to talk to him about. Cameron walked up to the door and opened it, 
and that was when two maids who passed by the corridor stared at her in surprise. Young mast, young lady? Morning. She bit the bullet, greeted them, and quickly returned to her room. The two maids took a closer look at the room where she came out from, covered their mouths, and giggled. It seems that the rumor is true. The young lady had already had an unusual relationship with Mr. Goldman when she was still the young master. How could this be fake? I didn't expect Mr. Southern Sr. to get himself a son-in-law through this series of incidents. At 10 a.m., seeing that there was no one downstairs, Cameron took advantage of this window to rush downstairs. And just as she was about to reach the door, Sonny's voice came from behind. Where are you going? She was astonished, rubbed her nose, and turned around. I'm going out to grab something to eat. He placed the newspaper down on the table and sat on the couch. Are we not feeding you enough at home? She glanced away and said, casually, I want to spend some money to eat out. It's not that I'm spending your money. Last night, Sonny paused for half a second, then laughed out loud. I went to your room looking for you. Why weren't you there? Didn't you go to Way? Oh, how did you know that I was at Willie's? Cameron licked her lips to moisturize them and raised her eyebrows lightly. This old man actually wants to trick me into saying it. She then answered with an unchanged expression, I'm just guessing. Sonny snorted and picked up the teacup. Willie may not come back today as he has something to do, so this should be good news for you. She was flustered. What's happened to him? He pondered. They've sent someone here all the way from Bassburg. Anyway, they'll leave the East Islands as soon as this matter is over, so perhaps we'll never see them again. After saying that, he lifted his gaze and paid attention to Cameron's reaction. Cameron froze in place as thoughts flashed across her mind. On the other side of town, Waylon and Quincy met in a private room in Yuzu Villa. Quincy looked around. This island isn't what I imagined it to be. In the impression of outsiders, the East Islands had always been an archipelago, isolated from the world, surrounded by vast oceans on all sides. After all, it had to be a wicked place, no matter what others had said. Quincy did not expect the Southerners to have lived such a rich and colorful life on the biggest island. It felt like they were a family of wild cranes, isolated from the hustle and bustle of the rest of the world. It was nowhere close to having others call it a wicked place. Waylon smiled. Maybe it's because of Mr. Southern Sr. Quincy looked at him. You've all been here for a month. Mrs. Goldman is very worried about you and Miss Goldman. By the way, where's Miss Goldman? She's at Nollis. Quincy frowned. Wouldn't it be more dangerous for her to follow him around? Waylon ran his fingers over the patterns on the teacup. No lace will never allow her to appear around him if it's not safe. He's in the dark now, and Donald is getting flanked by Fabio and the Southern clan. So you tell me, will he still have the time and energy to care about no lace as a threat? Quincy was dumbfounded for a second and arrived at a lightbulb moment. That's true. Waylon put down the teacup and raised his head. Are your plans ready already? We're ready. In any case, Donald won't be able to leave this island. Even if he's capable of doing so, Interpol has arranged for their forces to stand by at all the ports of the surrounding cities, and these places are all heavily guarded. There's no way that he can escape that. Chapter 2186 The two of them stayed in the private room until noon before leaving. Waylon then sent Quincy back to the hotel. In the hotel lobby, when they ran into Sedai, Quincy's eyes lit up, and he rushed up to her with a wide grin, intending to hug her. Baby! Sedai stretched out her hand to stop him from approaching, who gave you the permission to call me by my name out here. His expression looked extremely aggrieved. I haven't seen you for so long, so why can't you let me hug you for a bit? Sedai grabbed him by the collar. Why didn't you notify me before you came to the East Islands? Nobody told me that he's also included in the team that the Goldman sent here. Quincy forced out a smile. I'm worried about you. Worry about yourself first, you rookie. I don't have the time to protect you here. Quincy gave off a profound smile and held her hand. 
don't worry. I may be a rookie when it comes to combat, but I always do well with this great brain of mine. Waylon smiled helplessly on the side and shook his head. At the same time, Donald met Fabio at the ferry winery. Fabio confronted him about the fact that he had sent someone to kill him, and Donald laughed out loud. You're one lucky bastard. You actually know that you have to take refuge and side with the Southern clan. Fabio sneered. Do you think that you've won? Donald Matthews, your end might even be a lot worse than mine. This sentence froze the atmosphere instantly. Donald's expression turned gloomy. He stared at Fabio, who was unmoved, and speculated about his thoughts. But are you reconciled with the fact that you've lost? Please remember that this is all caused by the Southern clan, so will they let you get away with this even though you've chosen to side with them now? Whether they'll let me get away with what I've done is another story for another day. What I know now is that the person who wants me six feet under now is you, you bastard. Fabio poured the wine slowly and calmly. I'm not reconciled with everything that's happened. If I could go back in time, I'd definitely get rid of you in the first place. Donald burst into laughter. Too bad you didn't. Fabio's expression remained unchanged. It doesn't matter. We'll each answer the question of dead or alive with a final battle someday. Donald looked at him and said nothing. Fabio finished drinking the wine in his glass and got up. I'll make sure I'm there to witness your miserable failure in the end. After Fabio left, Donald's expression became gloomier, and he was sure that Fabio had indeed joined forces with the Southern clan. He was really upset about the fact that he could not get rid of him the other day. Chunky walked up to him. Sir, Fabio joining forces with the Southern clan isn't good news for you. Donald pinched the foot of the wine glass. Do you really think that I'm unaware of that? The men we sent last time have failed, and it'll even be more difficult for us to kill him from now on. Not to mention that the Southern clan will send someone to follow him around. Chunky hesitated. Then what should we do now? We can only strike first and fast. Donald pinched the glass and swirled it lightly, and his eyes turned grim. Doesn't Mr. Southern Sr. care about his daughter the most? Are you referring to Miss Southern? But her combat skills. Chunky did not continue talking. Even though Cameron was a woman, the top-class assassins they had sent to kill her had all died, so it was conceivable that she was no less skilled than those men. Donald smirked. No matter how good she is, there will be times when she's not being careful. As long as Cameron is in our captivity, I'll never be afraid of the Southern clan. The next day. When Cameron was having breakfast, she looked at the vacant seat across the table and sank deep in thought. Waylon indeed did not come back to their residence. Recently, there had been so many people around the dining table during mealtimes, but there was one less now, and she was a little depressed about it. Sonny normally ate as if nothing had happened. He then glanced at Cameron, who did not eat. Very much, and hinted, daughters and dead fish are no keeping wares. This old saying seems to be somewhat true. She looked a little confused. What does that mean? I think that your mind isn't even here with us. Sonny raised his eyebrows. What's wrong? Are you not used to it now that Willie isn't here? Cameron choked on her words and then explained, What's there to get used to? Isn't this the usual norm before Wayne's appearance? Chapter 2187 Cameron picked up her silverware and started eating while Sonny put his down. Willie is about to leave. What are your thoughts on that? Cameron froze for a moment, lowered her head, and continued eating. What idea do you expect me to have? Will he stay here just because I want him to stay? His eyes lit up. How are you so sure he won't? Perhaps he'll stay behind if you make your wish known? Cameron was astonished for a split second. She then raised her head and looked at Sonny after a moment. Dad, I don't really get what you just said. Why don't you give it to me straight? I intended to ask you about this too. Do you want to take him in as your son? Sonny was at a loss for words. His fists got so hard that he was on the brink of cracking her head open to see what was wrong with her brain. He calmed himself down and said earnestly, You're right. I indeed want to do so. 
but he already has a biological father, so how can I make him my son? So use that brain of yours and give it a deeper thought. Cameron drank the soup from her spoon. Maybe you can become his son? Sonny was utterly speechless. If I had a heart condition, I would have died of a heart attack by now, wouldn't I? His face was ashen. If that's the best you can do, you won't be able to get married for the rest of your life. Cameron lifted her gaze and suddenly remembered the nightmare that she had experienced the other day. She put down her silverware and stared at the infuriated Sonny. Are you saying that you want me to get married? Thank God that there's still hope for that brain of yours. Cameron got up. I'm done eating. Sonny was stunned for a while. What just happened? What's with the reaction as soon as marriage is mentioned? Back in Cameron's room. Cameron leaned behind the door. The dream from that night was still lingering in her mind. As soon as I get married, the Southern will no longer have anything to do with me. Is that dream slowly but surely turning into reality? Before my identity was revealed, I thought that I'd be living here for the rest of my life as long as I was still the one and only Mr. Southern. However, I seem to have not thought about this outcome. I'm a woman, and sooner or later, I'll have to get myself married to someone. In the afternoon, Waylon brought Quincy to the Southern Manor to pay Sonny a visit. This was Quincy's first meeting with Sonny, so he was somewhat cautious, and the three chatted in the study. Waylon glanced out the window and saw Cameron's figure walking across the courtyard. She then stopped the two middle-aged maids and said something to them. He saw her looking around first, before talking to the maids, she looked very cautious as if she was afraid of being heard. As for the maids, they were surprised at first but then burst into laughter almost instantly. Cameron crossed her arms and listened to them. She looked suspicious at times, surprised for a bit, and dazed at times. Her expression changed throughout the whole conversation. Quincy just happened to call Waylon at that moment, but the latter did not hear him. He looked in the direction where Waylon's gaze was fixed. Mr. Goldman, what are you staring at? Is there something attractive in the yard? Waylon turned his head. I don't see anything. Sonny glanced out the window and could see Cameron and the maids from where he was sitting. He then put his teacup down and smiled. You're indeed the secretary who served Mr. Nolan Goldman back then. This plan sounds great. It seems very well, placed together. Quincy turned his head and gave off a modest smile. You're flattering me. I've accomplished almost nothing when compared to you and Mr. Southern. Sonny paused for a bit and then laughed out loud. The Mr. Southern that you just mentioned. That's actually my daughter. Quincy was dumbfounded. Daughter? You've just arrived on the island, so you might not know about this. Sonny brushed his fingertips over the lid of the cup. I only have one daughter, and her name is Cameron Southern, and the appellation Mr. Southern is just an identity that I came up with to cover my daughter's real identity. Quincy was really too surprised. The legendary Mr. Southern is actually a woman. Who would believe this piece of information? Cameron rubbed her chin in the courtyard after listening to the two maids' words. So, Dad is forcing me to get married not because he wants to drive me away? Chapter 2188 The maid responded with a chuckle, How can you misunderstand Mr. Southern Sr.'s intention so much? You're his only daughter, so even if you get married, you'll still be his daughter. Why would he cut off his relationship with you just because you're married? The other maid added, yes, although it's said that daughters and dead fish are not keeping wares, that's only feasible in certain situations. Mr. Southern Sr. loves you so much. There's no way that he'll refuse to recognize you as his daughter after you've gotten married. A woman's maiden family will always be her biggest backing. Cameron frowned. It does seem that the dream is quite the opposite when compared to reality. How could Dad be as ruthless as he was in the dream? I might have overthought this and gotten too anxious and worried. The two maids exchanged gazes and giggled. Miss Southern, all of us think Mr. Goldman is a pretty good choice. She was startled. Care to elaborate on that? He looks handsome and charming, elegant and gentle. Also, he's always humble and polite, don't you think so? 
Cameron was overwhelmed by the description. Handsome and charming looking, yes. Humble and polite, I'll give him a pass. Elegant and gentle? These might just be superficial. After all, I've seen Wayne's ruthless side firsthand. This person's thoughts are extremely meticulous and delicate, and he's very observant as if nothing can be hidden from his sight. In her eyes, being elegant and gentle could only be Wayland's facade. She shrugged. He's all right. The two maids were shocked and could not believe it. Mr. Goldman is only an all right person to Miss Southern. Cameron explained solemnly, when a man looks too good, it only makes it easier for him to be promiscuous. I might consider him if he looked a little uglier than me. What she wanted to say was that if he was inferior to her in terms of looks, then the person who could act promiscuously would be her. The two maids were at a loss for words. Does that mean that you like ugly men, Miss Southern? Cameron was stunned and turned around subconsciously. Waylon had been standing behind him for some time, and he seemed to have heard what she had just said. The two maids quickly left the scene. Cameron looked at him. How long has it been since you've been standing here? He answered instantly, just now. Cameron narrowed her eyes. So, did you hear what I just said? Waylon smiled. Do you plan to silence me? She crossed her arms. I'm nowhere near strong enough to go against any one of the three forces that are about to go to war now. Waylon was standing a short distance away from her, his figure blocking the light that was directly shining at her. Cameron was slightly flustered as she stared into his doubtful eyes. In Basberg, I can only be considered an average, looking man. Cameron was instantly astounded and frowned after a while. You're only average looking? You're being too modest now, aren't you? He's just showing off now. He nodded. It's true. Cameron burst into a chuckle, but immediately restrained her expression. Are you kidding? Me? I might not have been to Basberg, but I'm not dumb. He chuckled. So, do you think I'm a promiscuous man just because I look good? She paused for a split second. Isn't this a given? After saying that, Cameron realized that something did not sound right. Why are we talking about you? Weren't you referring to me when you made that statement? Cameron was rendered speechless. There's no way I'll be able to explain myself now. Or does he know I was talking about him because he heard the maids complimenting him before that? It was really embarrassing to be caught red-handed when bad-mouthing someone else. Cameron forced a smile. I was just giving an example. She was about to leave, but Waylon stopped her. But you've made such a blunt presumption about me. If this were to spread out to the public, wouldn't my reputation be severely damaged? What will others think of me? They'll think that I'm just another scumbag. Why would men care about their reputation? Men do care about our reputation. He looked earnest, or to be precise, extremely solemn. What kind of woman would marry a disreputable man? Would you do so? Chapter 2189 Cameron rubbed her temples and did not dare to look directly at him. Okay, I take back what I just said, all right? I'll even apologize to you. Waylon stared at her. This apology isn't sincere enough. She looked up. Then what do you want? He gave off a half, smile. You claimed overtly in front of the maids that I'm a promiscuous person. That will surely slander my reputation, so don't you need to be held accountable? Cameron was completely astonished. Quincy, who was hiding behind the wall, was completely gobsmacked. He rubbed his eyes. Is that the eldest son of the Goldman that I've known for years? He's actually making a fool out of the young lady. As for Sonny, he was on cloud nine at the moment. He did not expect this young man to be even more flirtatious than he himself was back when he was significantly younger. Cameron was about to say something when she heard rustling movements. She turned her head and immediately realized that Sonny and Quincy were eavesdropping. The two people behind the wall were shocked when she detected them and hid immediately. Cameron was suspicious. What are they doing sneaking around? No one knew when Waylon came even closer to her and his voice was only inches away from her ear. 
You haven't answered my question. Cameron turned her head, and the first thing that caught her eyes was a face that was so close that it almost went out of focus. She gasped, stopped breathing, and took a step back subconsciously. Don't get so close to me all of a sudden. As for this matter, we'll talk about it when I have an idea of what I can do. She then left in a hurry. Waylon looked at the figure that was leaving the scene as if she was running for her life, and a slightly smug curve appeared on the corners of his lips as he could not help but be amused. On the other end of the courtyard, Sunny could not help but sigh. That girl is really clueless. Can't you see that he's obviously teasing you? Quincy wondered. Who is that young lady? Sunny responded, she's my daughter. Quincy was surprised. That young lady is actually the legendary young Mr. Southern? Why does she feel so different from the rumors? Thinking of what Waylon did just now, he pondered. I've never seen Waylon act like that before. Does this Miss Southern have such great charm? After all, with Waylon's appearance and background, he should have been extremely popular among the ladies back when he was in Stoslo and Basberg, but he's the one who's actively flirting with another lady now. And that's not the issue here. It seems that the lady is disgusted by him, because he's too good-looking. This is just outrageous. Waylon came over. Uncle Quincy. Quincy returned to his senses, but he did not expect to be found in the corner of the courtyard after eavesdropping on Waylon with Sonny. He let off an awkward chuckle. Mr. Goldman, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. It was Mr. Southern Sr. As soon as he turned his head, Sonny had disappeared long ago, and he was the only one left. He did not even notice that Sonny had escaped. Fortunately, Waylon did not say anything about his actions. However, Quincy was just too curious. Mr. Goldman, are you courting Miss Southern? Waylon fastened the buttons on his sleeves and chuckled. Teasing her is just an interesting thing to do. Quincy felt doubtful. You call this teasing her? That's a full-on flirt. Quincy sounded helpless. Mr. Goldman, I'd advise you not to tease her too much. Just in case the young lady thinks that you're serious about it, but you actually are not interested in her, that will hurt a lot, won't it? Waylon's eyes moved. Why would I tease her if I was not interested in doing so? Quincy was at a loss for words. So, is he admitting that he has a thing for her? Are all the heirs of the Goldman so exceptionally different when it comes to courting ladies? Two days later, Cameron came to the commune, and Daisy handed her the shirt that had been delivered to her. There you go, the tailor has done his job. Cameron took the shirt out of the gift box. The fabric was indeed the same as the shirts that Waylon had been wearing every day. Its texture looked high-end and felt smooth, silky, and comfortable. She was surprised. It's done already? That's fast? Daisy smiled. It's just a shirt. It's not as troublesome as a suit. If there aren't too many orders, it usually only takes five to seven days. Besides, all of Waylon's clothes are custom-made in that shop. So, they own templates that are tailored specifically for him. That's why it doesn't take too much time at all. Chapter 2190 It meant that the shop already had a specific template and fabric reserved for Waylon. All his measurements and sizes were fixed, so all the tailor needed to do was only to cut the fabric and go straight into production. Cameron put the shirt back in the gift box. Why didn't you tell me that sooner? I actually had to take all his measurements for this shirt. However, it turned out that all his measurements were already recorded in the shop system, and there was no need for her to provide his measurements to the shop at all. Daisy chuckled. I didn't expect you to be so attentive over a shirt. It's compensation for me to him, after all. She closed the lid of the gift box, inserted it in the gift bag, and got up. Okay, then I'll go home first. Daisy escorted Cameron to the door and watched as she drove away. She was about to close the door when she suddenly saw two cars parked on the opposite side of the road turn around and drive in the same direction as Cameron did shortly after she had left. Daisy frowned. Those cars left in the same direction as Cameron. Could they be tailing her? Cameron was driving her car toward the southern manor as she turned to the side and stared at the gift bag on the front passenger seat. 
I could have gotten Daisy to pass it to Wayne on my behalf, so why did I go to her to pick it up in person? I'll have to face Wayne again, because of this. Speaking of which, Wayne acted strangely around me two days ago. Is it just me, or has he changed his attitude toward me? Is it because of the things he said that make his actions from that day slightly inexplicable? Just when she got distracted for a split second, the two cars overtook her and stopped in front of her. She returned to her senses instantly, slammed on the brake, and the car rammed into the rear of the car in front of her. The trunk of the car in front got dented. The two cars stopped. Cameron clicked her tongue, unbuckled her seat belt, and got out of the car. She walked up to the car and knocked on its window. When the other party lowered the car window halfway, Cameron propped her hand against the door. Bro, where did you get that driver's license of yours? Don't you know how to use the signal light when you want to change lanes? Are you trying to frame me for causing this accident? The driver gave off a smile and apologized, I'm sorry, Miss Southern. I was in a hurry and forgot about it. Cameron squinted. Do I know you? She took a closer look at the man in the car. It was an unfamiliar face that she had never seen on the Southern Clan's territory, and there seemed to be someone in the back seat. Normally, when such an incident took place, the driver or the passengers in the car would get out of the car to take a look at the severity of the situation. Although the driver had been apologizing with a wide grin, it seemed rather contrived, and Cameron managed to notice it. Just as she noticed that something smelled fishy with these men, the person in the back seat got out of the car, and another four men got out of the other car. Cameron burst into laughter all of a sudden. Oh? It turns out that I've been marked a target by someone. The two men who got out of the car rolled up their sleeves. Although you're a woman, I heard that you're a pro when it comes to kicking asses. We really want to get a first-hand experience out of this encounter of ours. Cameron scoffed, lifted her gaze, and glanced at them. Are you guys it? The men were provoked by Cameron's words and started assaulting her. She instantly punched the man nearest her, and the man hit the door and fell to the ground. Another man tried to stab her from behind with a dagger, but missed by only an inch as the blade's spine only scratched her cheek. In an instant, the dagger was turned, and the blade's edge slashed across the air horizontally. Cameron grasped his wrist, intercepted his action, and instantly stabbed the man's eyes with her fingers. The other party wailed and rolled on the ground in pain, covering his eyes all the time, while she turned and kicked him sideways, pushing him out of the way. Another man attacked from behind, and she reacted almost immediately. After dodging him, she made a series of swift and ruthless moves, and the man could not avoid most of them. It did not take long for the four men to get forced into a corner, and there was no more room for them to retreat to. Just as Cameron was walking up to them, intending to give them one last round of physical lessons, the man sitting in the driver's seat suddenly rushed out of the car. Cameron was about to move when one of the men who got up from the ground suddenly took out a pepper spray and sprayed it in her eyes. She failed to dodge the underhand retaliation, and the instant and intense pain and burning sensation brought everything to a stop as she could no longer move. She was then hit hard in the back and fell to the ground.